scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Yes, it's part two of the Dark Eyes 3 Listen Along. Now, as I said last time, part one was primarily concerned with the setup, as part one's often are. But of course, you've got full narratives, because this is a four-disc story over a five-disc set. So episode one was absolutely the setup. But of course, each story within Each disc has to have its own narrative arc. It has to have its beginning, its middle and an end. And obviously with time travel, not necessarily in that order. Your basic overriding arc is what's left over from the last Dark Eye story. The Daleks, who admittedly have yet to appear, have decided to give the Doctor his own reign, to let him be in charge of the destiny, because the Daleks have an enemy that they're just not up to fighting. The Infinite The gaseous warriors who turn people into zombies who are just plain cool. There is a historic 50-year battle between humanity and these creatures, which apparently humanity wins, which we've seen in old 60s stories and indeed with Tom Baker. The fact that these stories weren't released in order just made things a bit more exciting. So we're now in part two and this is where it gets more interesting. After part one, we were left with the Master having some sort of nefarious scheme. He's got Molly involved. She's convinced her that she's still on the Western Front, fighting and curing the sick. The Master's behaving very much like the Doctor. That's all in hand. So now we've got Sally Armstrong, the Doctor's companion, who is just brilliant. Warped, deluded and absolutely fantastic. And she and Livchenka have arrived on a colonist world. Think something along the lines of, well, colony in space. Except, unlike those other stories, there's an alien race here that we've never met before. And they are fantastic. They've got their own translation devices and they're a lot more scorpion-like than cockroach-like, as people refer to them here. Again, think more avatar for the locals and you're halfway there. These insectoid people cannot be affected by the gas of forever or the breath of forever, whatever it's called, the intelligent gas that is the villains. But the humans who live on their world can. They've rounded them all up and put them into camps, where they're suffering. Into this setup arrives Livchenka, but Livchenka organised by Narvin. Now, lives not particularly well. But this is a world where the master's plans are going to be messed about with. So, Narvin, who is to all intents and purposes working for the CIA, manages to get his hands dirty, using the Doctor, using Livchenka, but also going for his own agenda. Oh, how lovely these Gallifreyans are at working to their own agenda. So that's your basic setup. It's a nice story, but it wouldn't have worked as part of the main range, mainly because, narratively, it goes somewhere, and it leads on to part three. Admittedly, it is a sealed unit in its sense, but the arc wouldn't have worked outside of a boxed set. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is, you've signed up for the whole journey. Something bigger, deeper, darker. And that's what we're getting with dark eyes. Now, admittedly, the use of Molly is proving to be less tangible. Which is why I'm glad after Dark Eyes 4, which comes out in March, which is only days away at this point, I'm glad they're not going to be calling them dark eyes. They're going to call them something else. But as time goes by, we're getting closer and closer, narratively speaking, to the time war. Perhaps it will be time for some series of Eighth Doctor adventures that are not all Dalek-y and foreboding and a bit menacing. Perhaps that's what floats McGann's boat. We just don't know. So with that, I'll leave you and then come back in the next couple of days after I've listened to part three. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, Dark Eyes 3. My name is Hope Gardner, Colony Row 351. We need help. 
The infinite warriors are closing in. You saved us before. Bring the lady. The lady with the dark eyes. Bring Molly O'Sullivan. You can save us all. Lord Jalda, human is here. You are strong arm. Sally Armstrong, you know my interest. The humans. Promotions are not part of this war. Maybe I speak to eminence. So when it wins this war, it will be a friend to Ramosa. Ah, Liv, the fellow you let in, the doctor. He's gone, Professor. Good. A deluded lunatic. What did he say? That my research was a danger to the future. <laughs> Sometimes the best way to fight a fire is to make sure it doesn't get started. I'm taking away your matches. Your mind opens, Doctor. We will take it. Sounds like one of your typical schemes. Oh, on the contrary. This is my master plan. Every eventuality has been considered. You shall all fall to the might of the infinite. Die! You need to order your people back into the jungle. Hide. We stand and fight. Run warm blood before I spill it. We love stories. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast, available on RSS, iTunes, Stitcher, Audio Boom, and Tumblr. Doctor Who and its associated works are copyright of the BBC. No infringement is intended. You can contact the show, donate, buy merchandise, or find out more about my other projects by visiting the Tin Dog Podcast homepage and clicking on the links. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Mm-hmm.